So, all right, guys, welcome back to another Miscellaneous Monday video. This one is going to include a little bit of a stoned history. So, I brought my rig right here ready to use when the time comes. I want to thank Mig Vapor, who sent me a whole box of goodies, told me sponsor any kind of Funny Friday videos of the Miscellaneous Monday. Just vape on his products, let the smokers out there know that Mig Vapor is one of the best places to go if you're looking for an alternative to a cigarette. He still makes the kind that actually resemble the feel, shape, and size of an actual cigarette. And then this is the old school. Basically, we call them, I think, cartomizers. Maybe they call them cartridges now. But they already come pre-packed with the juice in them. You just screw them on the battery and vape. But of course they work even better today. Now I had a lot of people asking me in my last Miscellaneous Monday video about the e-bike that I showed. I've got almost 200 miles put on that already. I've been doing the Wenatchee Loop here, which is like a 12 mile loop all the way around the Columbia. You go across two bridges over the river. It's fucking beautiful. I'm thinking of putting on a, a GoPro on a helmet just so you guys can go along the ride with me. But if you are interested in taking a look at the e-bike that I've got, it's a very affordable e-bike and I ordered it online. I'll put the link underneath that video as well as a link to where you can go check out Mig Vapor and his whole selection of different products get you off them icky sticks. But all right, guys, right after this, we're going to come back and we're going to talk a little bit about crystal meth, the Nazis, Hitler, and World War II. Should be fun. So all right, guys, I got my 100 mil THC loaded soda and my vape. I'm ready to go. Mm. Oh, just maybe one more thing. Hang on a second. <laughs> now I'm ready. So most people know Hitler was a very evil individual. And most people know that meth is a very evil drug. But not everybody knows those two things are actually connected. So if you've ever thought that meth was the most evil drug ever invented, you won't be surprised to hear it was invented by the Nazis in World War II. So we're going to talk about how the Nazis used meth to conquer a continent and how Hitler himself was basically a fucking twacked out junkie. So the story starts in the late 1930s. Basically, you got Hitler already acting like a disturbed, spoiled, tweaked out teenager living in the basement with France and Britain basically putting up with his crap at this point. They're just trying to give him this and give him that and hoping that basically he'll grow out of it or leave the rest of the fucking house alone. But he ain't gonna be like that. You guys know what it's like when you give something to a tweaker. They just keep coming back for more. So the last thing you want to do with a meth head is appease them. And this was basically what was called the era of appeasement in Europe. Man, that loaded is hitting me. So they serve him up Austria. Say, here you go, man. They got German fucking people with German roots in Austria. Kind of justify, all right, let him have Austria. Then he goes into Czechoslovakia. And they're still like, all right, man. But if we let you go into Czechoslovakia, that's it, right? You're cool with that. So Hitler's like, hell yeah, man, just give me that and I'm good. Well, as is always the case with a junkie, he's going to be looking for his next fix. And that next fix is going to be Poland. But unlike with Austria and Czechoslovakia, this is where the parents finally call in the intervention. They're going to put the foot down. Tough love now. No more, man. Poland, that's it. Thus far, no further. That's basically what they tell Hitler, but of course he don't believe it at this point. So they roll right into Poland. That is on September 1st, 1939, which is technically the first day of World War II. Oh shit, I just spilt some of my fucking loaded already. Party foul. So the Nazis were giving the soldiers crystal meth in pill form called Pervitin. And it was noticeable because it came in gold foiled wrappers. So the Nazis were able to use methamphetamines mixed in with what was called their Blitzkrieg, which is basically meth warfare. I'm just kidding. It's lightning warfare. But it fit very well with these quick strikes. You roll in with the Panzer Division followed by the infantry. And that is combined with air strikes from the Luft. Waffa, basically overwhelming an enemy quickly, gaining the upper hand before they get a chance to react. And lucky for us, basically, the meth strategy is never a good long
long-term strategy. That shit will work in the short term, man. You might clean your freaking apartment today. You might even get a little something done by tomorrow. But in a few days, man, that's all coming to an end because just like they always say, what goes up must come down. And that is true for meth heads as well. Although sometimes they can manage to stay up for quite a fucking while. So now you basically have Germany in this type of situation. I'm going to try to work in a few maps and things throughout this real quick stoned history so that you guys can kind of follow along with what's happening here. So you basically have Germany now is this big. <laughs> what? I thought it was intermission. So after this, it basically did shock the West that Hitler would be so bold as to actually go into Poland right there after we'd said that was it. Unlike with Austria and Czechoslovakia, this time they say that's it, bitch. Declare war on Germany, but the last thing they really expected Germany to do was come right back and fucking actually make war with them. If you guys remember in World War I, you had bogged down lines of entrenchment. The trenches ran for hundreds of miles at some point. You barely saw any movement in the line. So everybody's thinking it's going to be that type of a war now. They had factored in the crystal meth effect, which was going to allow this shit to be a lot quicker. But anyways, France had banked on that strategy. They would built what they called the Maginot Line which was basically a hundreds of mile long entrenchment with defensive positions and things all the way along it. The big mistake they made though was that they covered the Maginot Line across the entire length of the border with Germany, but they didn't continue it up with the length of the border with Belgium. I don't know what the fuck they thought the Belgians were going to do about it when the fucking Nazis came out running like they really thought they were going to hold them off, but that's what the Nazis basically did. They go through Belgium and they come through the Ardennes Forest, and nobody thought you could get a tank division through the Ardennes, so they really weren't worried about it, but they didn't know these fuckers were so high, dude. They managed to get through. They fucking plowed right through the Ardennes forest, rolled into fucking France, and then had a straight line into Paris before anybody was even fucking aware of what was happening. Basically, what they were able to do and how meth advantaged in this was it was a four-day full frontal assault with no fucking downtime. They basically sent 100% of their frontline troops out in the front, fought non-stop four days straight covered the entire continent ending with the invasion of france and basically ran all of the french and british troops right the fuck out of paris and up to dunkirk and the only thing that kept the nazis from actually surrounding them at dunkirk and going in and finishing off the invasion and taking all of those hundreds of thousands of troops as prisoners was because the fucking panzer divisions got too high and that's actually true man they were the highest of them all they managed to push ahead so fast they got like a day and a half ahead of the infantry troops so they had to hold off at paris and basically wait for the infantry to catch up and that was the one thing that bought the french and the british troops enough time that the british were basically able to call upon all vessels even private vessels fishing vessels all kind of fucking vessels to go over and rescue everybody off of Dunkirk. That shit seems like it would be badass, man, if you just own a little private fucking speedboat or something, and you're like, hell yeah, because you're just talking about the English Channel, which isn't a huge distance, so, I mean, you could get across it, but of course, you got German planes strafing the beaches and all kind of shit, man. I don't want to be on some meth myself for that fucking rescue effort. And I know the French get a lot of shit about giving up so easy in World War II, but what the fuck would you do if you had four million gacked out Nazis rushing across the freaking continent at you, man? Because that meth not only allowed them to go nonstop four days without needing to eat, drink, sleep, any of the normal human necessities, basically, but it also made them much more ruthless, cruel. This was all studied. The Nazis looked at all of the effects of crystal meth and just realized that this could make a fucking ruthless, brutal, unconscionable soldier who could just do shit that nobody else would be willing to do. And Nazi doctors had done studies on Jewish prisoners to see the ability of the human body to go beyond fatigue when under the influence of crystal meth. So they would give some of the um, prisoners crystal meth and some of them wouldn't have it. 
forced them to carry 60 pound blocks of concrete until they collapsed. The prisoners that weren't high would make it about a day, day and a half. The prisoners on crystal meth could go like a full three to four days, so almost two and a half to three times longer on the meth. And I remember telling my old editor, Malachi, young guy used to work down there, I was like, imagine how horrible that would be, man, being forced to do crystal meth and then just fucking carry a 60 pound brick nonstop for three fucking days, day and night. And he was like, it'd still be better than being in the group that didn't get the crystal meth. <laughs> yeah, you might think so, but I don't fucking know, man. But at this point, basically, Germany has got the entire continent of Europe. And Portugal are basically staying out of it. And Russia at this point has a non-aggression treaty signed with Germany. So they're cool at this point. I don't see if they had just stayed right where they were, how they were going to lose this fucking war. But they made the one mistake, which was trying to take the war on two fronts, when really Russia was not in a position to challenge them at this time. But there's a lot of interesting stuff. Now you're going to get basically the reversal of that meth-filled bubble that had expanded out across the continent. Now you're going to start to see that close back down as you have the invasion of D-Day coming from the West with the British and the Americans. Yeah, the Yankee Doodles finally coming into it. And then you got the Russians and the Communists coming in from the East. And even Hitler himself, of course, was feeling pretty good early on. The late 30s were great. But then as the effects of not only the war turning bad, but of the fucking cocktail of drugs that they've been giving him, the junkie that he has become, it's all going to start crashing down on him the way that you would hope it would any tragic figure who deserves it got it coming like him. The shit ended well. But all right, guys, we're going to come back. And we're going to talk about the second half of the war, basically from around 1941, 1942. We got Pearl Harbor, we got the Russian invasion, and then we're going to have the Allied invasion of Germany, which actually is pretty interesting itself. It includes the Battle of the Bulge. Because they were using crystal meth to fight that Battle of the Bulge too. <laughs> Keep those soldiers nice and lean. But anyways, we'll get into all that in the second part. So come back for Stoned History, How Crystal Meth Lost World War II. I'll see you guys for that one. If you have any other requests for a historical event you want to see me get high and tell you guys about, put it down in the comments. Thank you so much to Mig Vapor for sponsoring this video. I do love these new flavors, the grape drink, the Miami flavor, all of the new fruity stuff. But of course, he still carries a lot of the classic. You've got um, something that is basically equivalent of a Camel, a Marlboro, uh, Parliament cigarettes, all that type of stuff. He has several different tobacco flavored e-juice as well. Great for people trying to get off them cigarettes. Look for the link underneath if you're interested in going over and checking out an e-cig from Mig Vapor. Everybody else, thanks for hanging out with me for a while today. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and ring that little bell to get the notifications. I will be back again tomorrow with a new product for you guys to look at. Cheers. Have a great rest of your vaping day. I think I just busted you in the lip, man. My bad. <laughs>